hello Good evening. Hello, good evening. Hi, good evening. Hi, How are you? Good evening, Byron. Good evening, Joanna. Hi, Jesus. Yeah, it's raining. It started to rain here a couple of... Oh, okay. Um, the rest of you, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so it can trouble us a little bit, but we will try to. Mm, okay. Uh, so, how's your day so far? Really nice, a little bit tired, I guess. Oh, okay. Did you work? Yes, I started to work, so that's why. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Did you check the material I sent? The, I sent a link today that maybe can help you. So yesterday you told me that you would like to have kind of that material. So did you have the chance to check that? I couldn't watch the video, but I saw the 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 thing that the image. Ah, okay, the idioms, right? with food yeah the idioms um is really interesting <laughs> yes uh, it's they can be um i have heard a couple of them the most common is to say ah it's a piece of cake that is the most common yeah it's, it is true because some people use use it so that's why i know what it means <laughs> uh -huh. but the the rest of them well i heard once i was talking with a colleague and he said well you know i have been um earning less because this and this situation but you know that's the way the cookies crumble and i was like this is the way the cookies crumble and i was like lost and he said, did you get it and i said not really so he explained it to me 
the meaning of that idiom. So it's good to know uh, that kind of vocabulary as well. And they are very used. Um, so we're going to start then. Uh, yesterday we stopped here. I'm going to share the platform. And then we're going to exercise with this. Share sound. Okay, so we're going to start with the adverbial clause of time. Let's listen to the explanation and then we're going to practice it. Hi, I have a question for you. What is an adverbial clause of time? I'll give you a hint. An adverbial clause of time can't occur alone as it needs a main idea. Stay around and listen to the explanation and follow the examples for better understanding. Adverbial Clauses of Time When people get married in Japan, they sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine. After the food is served, the guests give speeches or sing songs. Before the guests leave, the bride and groom give them presents. We're going to break this for you so you may understand it better. There are many types of adverbial clauses, but in this session we want you to learn about adverbial clause of time. Let's define what an adverbial clause is. An adverbial clause of time describes or defines the when something happens. Adverbial clauses of time are easy to identify because they begin with a subordinating conjunction. For example, when, after, before, since, until, while, whenever. We invite you to ask your teacher to give you a list of subordinating conjunctions as a reference. You may be wondering what does a subordinating conjunction do? A subordinating conjunction joins two sentences, one sentence being called dependent or subordinated and another sentence being independent or main clause. As said in the intro video, an adverbial clause of time can't occur on its own because it makes no sense. It is not complete. We will take a look at some examples. Once you see them, you will know what we're talking about here. When she comes home, she will read a bedtime story. Let's analyze this sentence. When is a subordinating conjunction or adverb. She is the subject. Comes the verb. Now, when she comes home, altogether is a subordinating or dependent clause, meaning it is not complete. It depends on some other idea. You expect more information. She will read a bedtime story is a main clause or independent clause, meaning it makes perfect sense alone. What we're doing now is making a more complex sentence. Let's work with another example. Before she went to school, she finished all her homework. I will give you a couple of minutes to break down this sentence. Try to do as we did on our previous example. So let's do it together. Before, subordinating conjunction or adverb. She, the subject. Went, the verb. Before she went to school is a subordinated or dependent clause. And she finished all her homework is a main or independent clause. Excellent. Well done. Before we go, it is important for you to know that an adverbial clause of time can appear either at the beginning of the entire sentence or in the middle of it. It is okay to say, since they got married, they have traveled around the world, or they have traveled around the world since they got married. The only difference is the use of a comma if the subordinating conjunction begins the sentence. Can you give us now two examples? Do so in our discussion box. All right, so this is what we're going to be practicing and studying today. So as you already watched the video, what do you think? What do you understand from that topic? Is it difficult? Is it easy for you? What's your opinion? What are your comments? I wanna hear you. I think it's not that difficult because, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> For me, it's a little difficult because I have, uh, I don't know. 
It's not real. Porque, o sea, dice que, eh, que hay dos maneras de, de, de expresarlo. Uno agregándole la coma y la otra no, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Ok. Thank you so much. We will discuss that and explain it better. Joana? Yes, I guess it's not that difficult for me, in my opinion, because I can identify that with the words with the arbelpial. I'm sorry, with the 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 words that you use to to link that um, the clauses, like when, after, before, since. That's why. Okay, good to know that. And the rest of you. Okay, so we will continue then here. Well, this is what uh, it's the topic on the video, right? The adverbial clause of time. Uh, in the video, we talk about uh, the subordinated conjunction, right? And also it is mentioned that there are um, many different types of adverbial clauses, but in this uh, class, in this section, we're going to discuss and practice with adverbial clauses of time. They are used to express when something occurs in time, right? So they are compounded by two clauses. The main clause are called independent clause and other is called dependent clause. And also it talks about subordinated conjunction. Is that what makes you feel like confused, Stephanie? Yeah. Yes. Okay, what is called subordinated conjunction is these letters that you have here in bold. Okay, estas palabras se llaman okay. En esta estructura gramatical se llaman subordinated conjunctions. No le pongan mucha atención como al nombre de cada cosa gramatical porque eso es como un poco traumático. Para mí lo es <ríe> escuchar estos nombres que cláusula dependiente, cláusula independiente, que la subordinada, no sé qué. Eso se, se hace a veces confuso, pero sí. Eh, cuando se refiere a la subordinated conjunction son estas palabritas que ven negrito acá. When, after y before. Estas son para referirse como a dar un, una, es como una expresión de tiempo, ¿verdad? Eh, se habla de... Primero, que, después, antes. Durante, ajá, desde que. Uh -huh. Esas exactamente. Eh, Y se habla de dos tipos de cláusulas. Para no hacer, para hacerlo más fácil, se llama cláusula, digamos, a la oración. Se compone de dos cláusulas o dos oraciones. Una se llama independiente y la otra dependiente. ¿Cuál es la dependiente? La dependiente es la que no tiene sentido por sí sola. Por eso se llama dependiente, porque necesita algo más para tener sentido. Necesita otra oración después. Por ejemplo, si yo digo la primera, when people get married in Japan, no estoy diciendo nada realmente, ¿verdad? Es como que, ajá, necesito algo más. Porque si solo digo eso, o digo after the food is served, no... Necesitamos más, ¿verdad? Tiene que ir acompañado de algo más porque esta oración por sí sola no tiene sentido o significado. Entonces, por eso se llama dependiente, porque depende de una segunda cláusula u oración para tener significado. Yo puedo decir, they sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine. The guests give speeches or sing songs. Uh, the bride and groom give them presents. Todas ellas tienen sentido ellas solas. Estas de acá, por esto estas se llaman independientes. Pero las primeras no. Entonces, por eso se llaman dependientes. Y se separan por una coma. Eh, when people get married in Japan, coma, they sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine. After the food is served, 
the guests give speeches or sing songs. Before the guests leave, the bride and groom give them presents. Y podemos cambiar eh, el orden. A eso es lo que se refería de la, si, de la coma, que se puede, si la, de, in de, la dependiente va primero, la que lleva el when, after, o before, vamos a usar una coma para separarlas. Pero también puedo decir, they sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine when people get married in Japan. Si lo hago de esta manera, entonces no utilizo la coma. Eh, igual, Leamos esta al revés, por decirlo así. The guest gives speeches or sing songs after the food is served. The bride and groom give them presents before the guest leaves. ¿Quedó un poco más claro? Mm, ok. Yes, yes. Thank you. Ok, you're welcome. Uh, is there any other question that you would like to ask or something that is not clear enough yet? No? Okay, so we may continue. Uh, what do you know about wedding customs in North America? Complete the sentence with the information below. So let's see. We have six sentences here and six possible options here. So let us read. Um, before a man and a woman get married, they usually mm, pay for a wedding and a reception, go on a short trip called honeymoon, uh, give the bride and groom gift yes. or some money. So what we're going to do is to discuss the answers for these ones to match, right? Number one with letter what? What do you think it can match okay. the number one? The letter B. Go on a short day. Yeah, I, I think it's the letter E. Before a man and woman get married, uh, they yes. usually the no, begin. No, uh, I no. think it's letter F. They letter F. Together for a year or more. Okay, so different opinions. What I'm going to do now is to create the groups so you can discuss <laughs> and try to match, right? So you have this the single thing, a uh, uh, little different. Um, yeah, you can discuss your memory. answer and say, I think is this the answer <laughs> for this letter? And then you compare when we turn <laughs> to the main section, so. Let's, okay. go. Let's go ahead and uh, discuss the answers in group. Eso va a estar bueno. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead.
Okay, it seems like everybody is here back again. So let's discuss the answers. Uh, volunteer for number one, raise your hand, please. Volunteer for number one. Okay, Luis. Okay, for number one, the answer is a letter F. Before a man and woman get married, they usually date each other for a year or more. That is completely correct. Thank you so much. So number one is letter F, thank you. Uh, number two, Byron. When a couple gets engaged, the men of them gives the woman an engagement ring. Okay, letter <laughs> D, that is correct. Thank you so much. So number two is letter D. Now uh, let's go with Jesus for number three. Right after a couple get engaged, they usually um, uh, Sorry, I. Sorry. Letter, P. Letter, P. Uh, letter, letter E, begin to plan the wedding. That is correct. Thank you so much. Uh, number Sorry. four, Joanna. Uh, number four is when a woman gets married, her family usually, letter A, pays for the wedding and reception. Okay, that is correct. Thank you so much, Joanna. Ruben, number five. When guests go to a wedding, they're almost always little sick. Give the bride and groom a gift or some money. That is correct. Thank you so much. And the last one, number six, volunteer. Made it sure. Thank you, Stephanie. Right after a couple gets married, they usually go on, go on a short trip called a honeymoon. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much. So, that's we're going to go to the next part and we're going to continue practicing here. You're going to practice writing, complete the paragraph with the information in the box and a comma where necessary. And we have a, a grammar note here to reinforce what we have discussed about the adverbial clauses of time. Uh, it is that an adverbial clause can come before or after the main clause. Uh, before the main clause, add a comma. For example, when a, when a couple gets married, they often receive gifts. So you see the comma is here. Uh, do not add a comma after the main clause, okay? A couple often receives gift when they get married. So in this case, when the main clause comes at the beginning, we don't add a comma. Now we have these expressions in the box. We have before the wedding reception ends, many newlyweds have to live with their relatives. Most couples like to be alone when they have enough money to pay for it. So we need to complete the paragraph using this information, right? So we have uh, newly married couples often live on their honeymoon. And then you can complete this paragraph and remember to use commas where necessary. I'll give you time, you can do that individually and you can do it in your notebook.
teacher, I am a little confused because uh, I think about the the paragraph. About, uh, uh, this is ah uh, and this. So that sentences we need to to order and make a new paragraph because I don't have or no le encuentro sentido how to do. Okay. So, okay, so in this, we're going to start from here. Newly married couples often live on their honeymoon and then we need to add an... Um, Tenemos que ah, agregar luego la, la, la oh, okay. conjunction. Remember to add. Tenemos okay. que agregar uh, when, after, before. Ah, okay. Lo cual agregarían ahí. Newly married couples often live on their honeymoon. Before the wedding reception ends. Ajá, before the wedding reception ends. Algunos se van antes de que la ceremonia de, termine, ¿verdad? Ah, ok. Eh, claro. Aquí está ya el before the wedding reception ends. Entonces aquí no necesitamos coma, ¿verdad? Siguen con esta, before the wedding reception ends. And then mm -hmm. pueden agregar otra acá y luego aquí ya se nos da como continuar el párrafo y luego seguimos acá. Has anybody finished? Yes. Okay, volunteers? No volunteers? Uh, I can help. Okay, Joanna, thank you. Okay. Uh, newly married couples often live on their honeymoon when they have enough money to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Nice. And then uh, you finish the paragraph there. Ahí termina tu paragrafo. Yes, okay. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. It's fine. You did a good job. So, any other idea? Alguien más que haya hecho algo diferente? Remember that participation is important. It will help you. Mm -hmm. 
No more volunteers. Me teacher, pero no sé si está bien. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Many many new newlyweds. No sé cómo se pronuncia. Newlyweds. Newlyweds have to live with relatives when they go on there. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good. That's a nice idea. Anybody okay. else? And it's very common, I think, uh, because paying rent, it's really expensive. <laughs> okay, so we're going to continue then with the next thing. What happens at these times in your country? Uh, let's complete the sentences. We have already started with the dependent clause. Ya tenemos en este ejercicio el inicio con una cláusula dependiente. So vamos a agregar el resto ya utilizando una cláusula independiente. Eso es un poco más fácil. What happens at these times in your country? Complete the sentences. We have the first one. Before a man and women get married, they usually date each other. Now, what happens here in our country when someone has a birthday? We cake. They usually cake. have a cake. Uh huh. That is an idea. What else? Any different idea? The family the, and friends. Uh, um, they uh, they a party. Uh, they family organize a party. They that family can... organize a party. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to give you time for you to write the complement. You can just write the complement. No es necesario que vuelvan a escribir lo que ya está. Solo pueden escribir number two and a complement. Number three and a complement. That is going to be individual. And I'm going to give you five minutes or four or three. <laughs> no more than five. Thank you. 
Okay, finished? No. No yet? Wait. Okay, two more minutes. Okay, uh, volunteer for number two. When someone has a birthday, I have, they usually go to a restaurant. Oh, nice. Yes, it's true. <laughs> and Joanna, what do you have? Uh, the number three, before some people eat a meal, uh, they wash their hands. Okay, good. I think the same. <laughs> really? <laughs> Me too. So you, okay, good. Uh, does Me somebody too. have something different for number three? Jesus, what do you have in number three? Uh, sorry, I didn't listen very well, but I think uh, in my case, before some people eat a meat, they usually uh, wash their hands. The same one, okay. Okay, sorry. Uh, I can find the... a new one. <laughs> okay. Right uh, before some people eat a meal, they ask for some drinks. Ah, okay. that's okay. Very good. In, in my case, teacher, uh -huh. uh, before some people eat a meal, they gain a little weight. Okay. Any other? Mm. Maybe before some people eat a meal, they pray and thanks God for that meal second yeah. sorry i don't do it huh? number four after a student graduates what do you me, have me teacher. me teacher jesus after a student after a student graduates they don't get a job no <laughs> in this <laughs> In, in this country, country the, it's difficult, right? Okay, anybody else for number four after a student graduates? 
me. Yes. I have. I have. He starts a new life. He starts a new life. Okay. Marvelous. Me. Okay, Ruben. Um, usually after the student graduate, uh, they go to the party in the hotel. Yes, they go to a party in a hotel. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, when a woman gets engaged, what do you have? Yes, teacher. Okay, Stephanie. When a woman gets engaged, they usually get married. Okay, that's nice, Luis. Uh, when a woman gets engaged, uh, her friends prepare a bachelorette party for her. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good Me one. too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, anybody else? Okay, number six. When a couple has their first child, what do you have? They go crazy. Me. They go crazy, okay. <laughs> they don't sleep. I cry. <laughs> they cry, okay. They don't sleep. <laughs> they have time to have fun. <laughs> They, they celebrate the arrival. Mm, they celebrate the arrival. You never eat a uh, pollo campero again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. If it is a boy, they kill a hen. <laughs> <laughs> you got the hen soup if it's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> Poor hand. Okay, now number seven. When a person retires, me. Okay. When a person retires, need to focus in something else to keep busy. To keep busy. Yeah, to keep their mind busy. That's very important. Very okay. good. Anybody Thanks. else? When you usually go on a trip yeah. or looking for a job. <laughs> the same, Byron? <laughs> it's not the same words, but it's like when a person retires, they start planning for their future vacation because they have a lot of free time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's mm -hmm. almost the same. <laughs> yes, it's almost, but in different words, yes. <laughs> Very nice work. Uh, you have something different? Yes. Yeah, they enjoy their grandchildren. In they young... enjoy their their grandchildren. Grand... Yeah, in the in our job, some people say you need to have kids to take care of your children, grandchildren. To spoil them. Because we are always busy, so we so we are always busy we cannot take care of, of the child the kid so we after we are get retired we can take care of our grandchildren oh, that's okay. why i wrote that answer yeah okay i have a rabbit that's enough for me <laughs> okay <laughs> so uh, you did a very nice job with this and uh, something very important is that also you had fun. Now, we have another speaking activity to wrap up the topic and to finish with the section number three. And then tomorrow we will start the section number four and then we go on August break. So we have this speaking activity. Um, Byron, can you read the instructions? Group work. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you know any interesting interesting customs 
related to the topics below, explain a question and discuss, discuss it with your classmates. Okay, good. Thank you so much. Um, Mariela, can you read the, the, the events that we have here? Birds? Okay, birds, courtship, uh, good luck, marriage, and seasons. Okay, good. Any question about vocabulary here? Courtship. 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 Marriage. Ma the pronunciation. Uh, okay, we got courtship is noviazgo. Oh. Mm -hmm. Courtship is noviazgo and marriages. 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 Mm -hmm. Marriages. Okay, so discuss about any interesting custom related to these topics. Birds, courtship, good luck, marriages, and seasons. We have a chart example here of a conversation between three people. It says, I know a custom from the Philippines. When a boy courts a girl, he stands outside her house and sings to her. Well, he's not really happy with that. What does he sing? Romantic <laughs> songs, of course. So, give you some time for you to discuss. Um, well, I think it's almost time to finish. You can, I'll give you a couple of minutes for you to think in one interested custom about any of these topics. It can be a custom of our country, or maybe you know about other um, countries, culture, and customs. And, and tell you uh, all the class? Yes, you can share. What do, you, what do you know or you have any idea about any of these topics? Uh, I think uh, for the birds, uh, usually make a baby shower for the new arbor for the baby. Uh -huh. Yes, that is a custom that you have for birds. Uh, people organize a baby shower party oh, for yeah, the nice. new bird. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much, Mariela. Anybody else? In seasons can be, well, I think it's not for Halloween's. It's not a season, right? It's well, just for. Mm -hmm. It refers to holidays. Um, custom. For the season, probably it can be in summer. Oh, yeah. So you can say in summer, most in of summer, people. Oh, oh, yeah. So it's going to be like in summer, most of the people are wearing like, I don't know. Like cool. <laughs> yeah. Shorts. Like, podría decir algo así. Comfortable no clothes. Sé. Yeah, comfortable clothes. Uh-huh. They usually go to the beach. And in some companies, for summer in some companies, uh, employees yeah. are allowed to go on uh, wearing shorts on Fridays, for example. Oh, that's true. <laughs> we do that. <laughs> oh, really? That. With that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes hats and things like that. Sometimes yeah. they go crazy in, in contact centers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, anybody else? There are many about marriages. I have heard that for when a um, lady is going to get married uh, for the ceremony, she has to to wear something uh, uh, yellow or things like that, right? What do you know about those customs? 
They need to wear something old, something new, and a list of things. I really don't believe in those traditions or customs or believe. I, I think that was uh, for our ancestors, uh, yes. our grandfathers. Old customs. Now it's uh -huh. like just the most important thing is to party and that's it. <laughs> that's yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, so with this we finish the section number three. Tomorrow we will start a new topic with the section number four. And uh, well, I'm not going to take more of your time, guys. So thank you for joining today's session. Remember to work on the platform. And see you tomorrow. Sleep well. Thank you, Miss. Thank you. Thank you bye for bye. Your time. bye. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night. Sleep well. Good night.